G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to set up double movement so you can get the best movement possible for any keyboard for free in under one minute. I know people have made these guides on the past. A lot of people using Keys 2X for this. That's what Jerrion talked about. I'm going to show you the new Wooting app that just got announced that is the simplest and best app by far. Not only does it actually give you better movement than what the Keys 2X app does, it literally takes you 30 seconds to set up and it's completely free. So I'm going to show you that at the start of the video. Also, I want to talk about the Boom TV $25,000 tournament that took place today. It was a fantastic tournament. We saw Stretch and Edgy take out the win and Centered and Commandment come second. But with all tournaments, we had some massive issues with lag. So much so that going into the final game, only 66 of the 100 invited players were playing the final game because they were just so over how bad the servers were. So I want to talk about what's causing that because I 100% know what is causing it now. I am convinced I've gone to the bottom of what the issue is and it's not Fortnite. Remember guys, with FNCS on this weekend, I'm not away at my wedding. I'll be watching all of the OCE, NA East, and NA West games on my stream live at twitch.tv slash Antics. Swing by and say good day. I'd really appreciate it. All right, everyone's been talking about double movement. I've been talking about it for a while. It is now officially allowed by Epic Games. You won't get banned for using any of the software I'm talking about in today's video. So let's compare it. We have the two main double movement programs. You have the Wooting software that's just been released recently, and you have X2 keys or times two keys that's been released for quite a while now. I'm not gonna talk about REWASD or REWAST. It's just not as good as either of these two, but which one is better? I believe Wooting for one reason. It is far, far simpler, and what it does is far, far better. So if you download X2 keys, and you've probably seen these guides around, it's pretty complicated. I mean, you can figure it out quickly, but it's not intuitive. Like you couldn't figure it out on your own. You need to figure out what all the numbers are. You need to figure out what the optimal angles are to get the proper movement. It's just, it's pretty complicated. Compare that to Wooting that you can literally just instantly download, click a couple buttons, go into your settings on Fortnite, do a couple of things and it just works. It's already set at the optimal movement as well. So let me show you this clip that Wooting tweeted out on their Twitter. They were showing off how their, their movement software is set at a 60% angle. I'm not going to talk about exactly what that does, but as you can see, as they drag that slider up, when it turns, the character starts losing momentum, which is not what you want. You want to be able to keep that speed going as fast as possible. So by default, the way Wooting comes is already the best you can have for the software. And remember, these are the people who invented the keyboard that started all of this. So I trust they know what they're talking about. I know they've tested it out. So I would be much prefer you guys trust Wooting over X2 keys. If you're already using X2 keys and you like it and you found settings that work well for you, by no means am I telling you to swap. I'm just saying if you haven't given double movement a try and you're a bit confused, let me show you how to set up the Wooting software because it takes 30 seconds. You can't ruin anything. And if you don't like it, you just click a switch and turn it off. It's that simple. All right, let me show you how to get double movement in about 30 seconds. So right now, as you can see, I don't have double movement, just normal mouse and keyboard, right? So what you're going to want to do is go to wooting.io slash double dash movement. I'll put the link in the description down below. Go to this website, click download now. Again, this is 100% safe. Nothing's going to happen to your PC. Once you download it, it'll come up down here. Just click it to launch it. It'll then install. Once it opens up, it does not work straight away, but it takes no time at all. So you now have the double movement software running. Make sure it's enabled and clicked on. Now you need to configure two things in Fortnite. Disable WASD keyboard movement bindings and lock input method as mouse. So that literally takes two seconds. So go to your keybinds, get rid of WASD, click apply. Do not press your A key to click apply. I'll explain why in a second. Then you go to lock input method as mouse. This is the fourth option from the left. Turn that on. Again, don't press A, press apply. If you press A, for example, you'll notice my sensitivity goes down. Don't freak out. That's just how the double movement software works. So click apply and there you go. I now have double movement. It's literally that simple. Like it doesn't take any time at all. It's crazy. So you can use keys 2x if you want to, but if you want to give double movement a go on Wooting, it takes you 30 seconds. That's the whole guide. In case that wasn't clear, that's how you get double movement on any keyboard for free. 
It'll take you 30 seconds. It is completely free. It is, in my opinion, the best double movement software. If you want to, you can go to the advanced settings on the Wooting app and you can change the percent of the angle so you can, you know, change it a bit if you like it. But honestly, leave it at 60%. The Wooting people have tested it. I was playing a bunch on it today. It felt really, really clean. So no more do you have to go and buy a Wooting keyboard or buy a specific keyboard or pay for software. You can just download software for free and set it up in less than a minute. It's insane. Moving on to the $25,000 Boom TV Duo Cup. It was an insane tournament. They ended up taking out the first place with Stretch and Edgy on 247 points, getting three wins out of the six matches. And I know what you're thinking. Whenever someone dominates that hard, they must have been so far above any other team on the leaderboard. Well, not really. Sensen and Commandment were in second place on 241, meaning the three of that trio managed to get three of the top four slots and no surprise behind them. But by a bit of a margin, you had Jack and Acorn on 189. Now, this tournament was insane. It was really, really fun to watch, especially towards the end. But unfortunately, it got off to a really, really rough start when in the first few games, there was the worst server lag I think we've ever seen since the skirmish days. I'm talking exactly like the Cup a few weeks ago, rubber banding, which is where players just get stuck. They can't even move. You had Reet tweeting out like a clip like this where he's just stuck in storm and dies because of it. We watched Scope's team die because of it. Clicks and Day at one point died because of it. Ron died because of it. Everyone was so mad and so upset to the point where the last game, game number six, only 66 of the 100 players went in. It was unfortunate to see. I want to say, you know, the pros should be better. And I feel like if the pros could see the bigger picture, they really should play these tournaments out. Because if I was a company looking at putting tens of thousands of dollars into a tournament prize pool for players to play, and I saw them leave another tournament they were invited into early because of bad servers or because they weren't doing well, I wouldn't put that money into the scene. But at the same time, I fully understand where the pros were coming from. It looks so, so frustrating to play on servers like this. The first couple games were by far the worst, and it was. It was unplayable. If you didn't get half-half zone, it was pretty much impossible you were going to be able to make half-half because you either got stuck in Storm or you just got held by the whole lobby. But let's talk about why this is happening because it doesn't happen in FNCS. I know there's lag. I'm not going to try and say the servers aren't lagging in FNCS, but they're nowhere near this laggy. But it also doesn't happen in OCE custom tournaments. And that's where I want to get onto with my next topic. I ended up tweeting this out. So the reason why it doesn't lag in FNCS as badly is because FNCS has dedicated tournament servers. When you run custom matches, they run on different servers to tournaments. We all know that. That is why tournaments run better. But why is an OCE customs trio tournament that I commentated last week that had a $10,000 prize pool and had more players and was more stacked than this having no lag whatsoever. It has to be the servers. It has to be Twitch's AWS, which is the Amazon servers and Twitch's servers being overloaded at that time during NA. It's the only explanation. The same broadcast team put on the production. So it wasn't like having observers in there was any issue. There's been no major game changes or patches since then. The only difference between the two tournaments is the time of day. OCE obviously takes place at night for NA pretty much at peak like 2, 3 a.m. So no one is on. So I think that is what's causing all these issues. And unfortunately, despite having a $25,000 prize pool, these Boom TV tournaments, the Phase Cup, they don't get dedicated tournament servers. And I think Epic needs to change that. Otherwise, no sponsors are going to want to invest into the game because unless you're going to run it at non-peak time, you're not going to have playable servers and the performance and the spectator and the viewership is going to go down. People stopped watching after the first few games because it just looked like it was going to be a terribly laggy tawny. It got better towards the end, and all of this has nothing to do with Boom TV whatsoever. So I don't want to hear it's the animals. I don't want to hear it's the AI, grenades, anything else. Yes, that's going to make the servers a bit laggier, but it doesn't explain why certain tournaments run perfectly fine and other tournaments are terrible. But the scary thing for me in all of this is... That doesn't seem like something Epic can fix. They might be able to optimize the game more and more to stop it lagging. But if this is genuinely just a connection issue between Fortnite and the servers at peak time, I don't know how Fortnite's going to be able to fix that. So this might not be an issue that's fixable. And that's what's really, really scares me. 
The tournament itself was pretty insane. There was nothing really to gain from it too much because of the lag. I don't want to look into it too much about this drop spot's the best or this meta's the best, but ultimately it was pretty crazy. Stretch and Edgy just managed to take high ground just with good positioning and good building almost every single game. Centered and Commandment managed to run up the low ground as they always do best, and it was literally every single end game. Stretch and Edgy on high ground, Centered Commandment on low ground. I think just because of that high ground advantage, Stretch and Edgy won more, but you saw Sentin and Commandment get way more eliminations on the low ground. So they were very close to taking it out. It's only because Stretch and Edgy just got so many wins with high ground. And I honestly don't really know how they did it. Going back into it, I can't see the VODs because there was no VODs from it. Because again, it's not through the compete tab. I'd have to get a pro to semi replay files. But checking the official broadcast, they showed it a few times. It was just really good positioning and really good building. There was no crazy trick to it. So don't worry, I'm going to do more in-depth videos on tournaments in the future. I was planning on using this as like a dream hack teaser, make a drop spot map, but then once the servers had their issues, I knew it wouldn't make a lot of sense because some phenomenal teams like Clicks and Day weren't able to really perform as well as they would have if there wasn't lag. And in the end, Day ended up having his uh, internet cut out by his mum because he's getting bad grades at school, which is just, to me, insane. I don't want to comment on anyone's family life or anything like that. I just wish that I could talk to so many pros' parents and let them know how insane the opportunity their kids have like I get it getting an, your education is awesome but in my opinion doing it online or going back and doing it in maybe a year's time unless your kid wants to go to school is fine like not many kids have the chance to make hundreds of thousands of dollars and pursue their dream job but at the same time I get it parents don't really understand esports the way I do and they want their kids to have a good school life I totally get that but again for reasons like that I don't want to base this tournament too much off like a who are the best best duos in NA East, that will come down the line. All right, guys, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Like I said, way more videos coming in the next few days that are going to be detailed in depth on tournaments. We have FNCS, so you know I'm going to have so much content to cover for the long videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.